Hello and welcome to this WordPress series. It is intended for beginners with zero to little knowledge about installing and administering WordPress. No coding background is required for this kind of a setup. So let's begin. This is the first session. In this session, we are going to look at what is a website, what is a domain name, what is hosting, how to set up name server, how to set up DNS records, how to set up A records, how to set up MX records. What is a website? A website is a curation of content. It has an identity in the form of website name or a domain name. That is the URL of your website. It is an intellectual property that you own and it is analogous to an interactive book. Why so? Because a book is basically a collection of content that could be textual content or some form of media that is images. When we say an interactive book, that means it has content. A website could have interactive content on it, which includes textual content or any form of media, which includes podcast, that is an audio, a video, image, text. In case of tutorial websites, it could include quiz, games, and the possibilities are numerous. A website could be a not-for-profit website. That is, it is meant for a social cause, for sharing content. It could be a business-driven website. That is, electronic business in the form of e-commerce that we know it of. Or it could be a monetized website. That is, a simple blog site or a information sharing site which is monetized using AdWords. So there are different types of websites that you can have. First of all, we look into what is a domain name. A domain name is an independent entity. We generally misconceive a domain name to be a website in itself, but it is not so. Until and unless you link the domain name to your website, a domain name only remains a domain name. It does not have anything related to it. So, a domain name is an independent entity. As soon as you purchase a domain name, it is registered with a DNS registrar. What is a DNS registrar? Domain Name System Registrar. So, this is a business entity that is authorized to work with the domain name systems and when you purchase a domain name it is basically registered in your name as the owner of that specific domain name a domain name could be a free domain name in case of blog post that you have on wordpress.com maybe uh, but that is generally a subdomain under the primary domain. A domain name could be a paid domain name. As I said, once you purchase a domain name, it is registered with the DNS registrar under your name as the owner and it provides identity to your website. So when you have to refer to a website, how do you do that is by referring to it by the name. Just like you have to, if you have to visit some place in real life, how do you do that is by searching the address. That address has a specific name of the area, the locality, the city, the state, the country and so on. So similarly, when you have to visit a website, you have to have the address and that address will have the name that will give it its identity. Next, hosting. What is hosting? Hosting is simply a space on a web server. Now, what is a web server? A web server is a machine on which the content of your website is going to reside. So, you have to purchase this hosting where you can save or upload the content 
of your website. There are various types of hosting available, shared hosting, dedicated hosting. So depending on your requirements, you can choose what kind of hosting do you need. There could be free hosting again in the case of a blog post on WordPress.com under the free plan, your blog post is being hosted for free. So you get the hosting space on WordPress server for free. It could be paid hosting that is in the case of a self-hosted server. So in this series, we are going to talk about paid domain names and paid hosting for a self-hosted server. And the after you purchase the hosting service, you are provided with the IP address of the server. That is basically the IP address of the machine that is the web server machine where your website is going to reside. So now you have the domain name purchased and now you have the hosting service. Where is the website and how do you link the two? The domain name and the hosting. These are two separate entities. Through name server. What is a name server? A name server is a web server that has DNS software installed on it. A server that is managed by a web host to manage the domain names that are associated with all of the hosting provider's accounts. Name servers are often called DNS servers as well. Every website has two name servers to which it is pointed. Webmaster must set it up upon purchasing a domain and a hosting account. So once you've purchased the two, you will have to link the domain name with the hosting service using the name server. We will see that in a bit. What is A record? A means address. A record is used to point a domain or subdomain to an IP address. Assigning a value to an A record means providing your DNS management panel with an IP address to where the domain or subdomain should point. What, what is CNAME? CNAME stands for canonical name. CNAME records are used to point a domain or subdomain to another host name. CNAME records can be used to alias one name to another. For example, yourdomain.com. This is the primary domain that you have. Another option is www.yourdomain.com. So, what you can do is you can set up the A record for yourdomain.com to point to the IP address using the A records and set up the C name record for www.yourdomain.com pointing to yourdomain.com. So whenever somebody is going to type www.yourdomain.com, they will be redirected to yourdomain.com. What is MX record? Mail Exchanger records are used to route email. The MX record itself specifies which server or servers to use to deliver mail to when this type of request is made to the domain. The priority number is used to indicate which of the servers listed as MX records it should attempt to use first. The MX record with the lower priority number is the first to be tried for email delivery. If this server is unable to handle the mail request, the next lowest priority number is used. Multiple servers are used to ensure mail delivery. So basically what it means is there are multiple servers that are used and are set up using priority numbers to deliver emails linked to your domain. Now, 
I presume you already have a domain name that you might have purchased, a hosting service, again a plan that you would have purchased and after purchasing the hosting service, you would have got access to the cPanel. Let us see first of all how to set up the name server. For setting up the name servers, you need to log in to your dashboard on the hosting service provider account. Here, when you go to list or search orders, select the hosting service. Here you will see the option of name server details. From here, you can copy these two name servers that are available. Select and copy them. Now you need to go to the domain name. In my case, I have the domain name and the hosting service from the same company. It is possible that you have it from different companies. So first you have to log in and access the details under your hosting service account. Copy the name servers. Log in to the dashboard where you have the domain name registered. Under the domain name details, you will see an option for name servers. And here, as you can see, two name servers are mandatory. So the two servers that we just copied from the hosting service, we will have to paste them here and click on update name servers. Now your hosting service has been linked to the domain name. Next, we will see how to set up the A records, C name record and MX record. So for that, you will have to log into your cPanel. Here I have already logged into my cPanel account and scroll down to the domains section. Under the domains section, you will see a zone editor. This gives you a brief uh, definition of what it does. A DNS converts domain names into computer readable IP addresses. DNS zone files configure domain names to the correct IP addresses. And you can manage these from the zone editor. Now, if you have multiple domain names, then you can just type the domain name that you are looking to manage. And from here, you will see the list for that specific domain name. Click on manage or directly click on add an A record, add a C name record, add an MX record. These are the three primary records that you need to update or else you can click on manage. And from here, you can click on the drop down and select what kind of record you want to add. It could be an A record, a C name record, MX record, TXT record, or any other kind of record. So just click on the type of record you want to update. From here, for the A record, enter the domain name for which you want to set up the A record and enter the IP address to which it should point to. For example, I am writing the domain name and the IP address that it should point to and then you can just click on add record. Once you click on add record, the detail will be updated. Similarly, you can add a C name record. Here you will have to write the address of the subdomain or the canonical domain that you want and suppose i write www dot domain name to the fully qualified domain name this is the domain name without www and click on add record next is to set up the mx record here you need to enter the domain name and set the priority of the server that you are setting it up for and the destination where do you want it to point to so these are the three basic records 
that you need to update from the cPanel and the name server from the hosting provider and the domain name registrar's admin dashboard. So setting up other records, Zone Editor is used to set up all types of DNS records. These are majorly required to be set up when a CDN is used for routing the data. In that case, the server through which the requests are served are changed and hence the records also need to change. In this session, we just linked the domain name to hosting using name server, updated A records, updated CNAME record, updated MX records, and that's about this session. See you in the next session. Thank you very much.